Hi, good morning everyone and welcome to our webinar. Uh, this is going to be about the biggest e-commerce game changers of 2016. Today we'll have a conversation about the different trends that you'll see in 2016, why they're important, and how you can leverage them to compete. My name is Rob McGordy. I'm the Director of Operations and Product here at Webgility, and I'll be your host. First things first, I'll cover some housekeeping. First, everyone set on mute. If you have any questions, please submit them via the question box on your panel, probably located in the lower right-hand side of your screen. As our goal to make this is as our goal is to make this interactive, uh, we'll be looking at these questions throughout the webinar as well as at the end. Also, feel free to participate via Twitter using the hashtag 2016GameChangers. Also, please follow us on Twitter if you are not already a follower. Today's agenda covers about an hour. First things first, we'll discuss overall e-commerce trends for 2016. Then we'll dive into some very specific game changers that we think everyone's going to be aware of in 2016. And then we'll go through a discussion in Q&A. Our goal is to have a lively interactive discussion, so please feel free to participate and send questions our way. I'd like to introduce Parag. He's the founder and CEO of Webgility. Parag has a passion for technology and possesses over 12 years of hands-on experience in design, development, and the marketing of business software. He's led cross-functional teams to deliver software solutions for thousands of e-commerce companies. Parag started his entrepreneurial journey when he was a partner at Gate6, one of the top five interactive agencies in Arizona, where he headed the technology team. After Gate6, he joined the Amazon team as product management lead and an evangelist for the Amazon Web Store, where he launched the Web Store developer program and managed some of the largest customer accounts, which generated millions in revenue for Amazon. Most importantly, Prague believes most businesses' challenges can be solved by looking closely at data. He loves numbers, and you'll get a good feel for that through today's discussion. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Rob. Looks like we have a full house. I'm really excited to be here and look forward to the discussion. All right, so let's jump right in to get started and talk about some of the things we're going to see in 2016, both with our customers and the industry as a whole. Brock, can you walk through some of these? Sure, happy to. Um, you know, first of all, I want to say that uh, you know the industry speaks broadly about sort of e-commerce trends, and and most often they're such a, at a high level that uh, most businesses can't actually relate to them as they're running their operations on a day-to-day -day basis. So one of the goals that I hope we can accomplish with today's webinar is to kind of get everything to the nuts and bolts of what really matters to small businesses. Um, but broadly looking at kind of the e-commerce trends uh, for 2016, uh, the word mobile should be no surprise to everyone. It's uh, the most impactful area for e-commerce companies to grow. Uh, so it's certainly one of the more important areas for SMBs, especially as you're looking at ways to grow your business and get access to new customers. Tying that in, you've got the impact of social media and all the marketing avenues, and certainly uh, for small businesses to grow and get visibility, they're going to need to have a lot of presence across the various social media channels, and of course uh, it should be no surprise that uh, a heavy uh, investment is required by businesses on the marketing side to get that visibility. Yeah, it seems almost like uh, being an e-commerce seller is like getting a degree in online marketing. It is, it is. In fact, uh, you know, as the small business owner, uh, you know, you're always sort of wearing multiple hats and uh, you very quickly have to become uh, a social media, a marketing expert, you have to become a sales guru, you have to understand um, all the different avenues of marketing, and not to mention, uh, you find yourself packing boxes and, and shipping them out the door every day. So you've got a lot of different things you're doing on a daily basis, and uh, hopefully, it, you know, through today's discussion, we can kind of talk about what's really important and how do you really focus to sort of change the game for your own business. And kind of stepping back again at sort of the broad trends, we talked about marketing, and if you think about sales and all the different fulfillment models that are out there, uh, a lot's being talked uh, these days about 
free shipping, uh, you know, fulfillment by Amazon, third-party logistics. Uh, there's just so many different things for uh, the small business owner to learn. Uh, and, you know, we'll try to cover a few of those in today's discussion, but certainly there's a lot going on in the industry um, and a lot for SMBs to kind of absorb as they look for ways to compete. Absolutely. Um, another big trend that uh, I, I see has emerged over, you know, from 2015 bleeding into 2016 is certainly the growth of international markets. Uh, it's becoming increasingly easier for the small business to ship products internationally. A lot of the big carriers are, uh, have made a tremendous strides in expanding their international fulfillment networks, and it's it's now again. Uh, not only in terms of fulfillment, but also in terms of greater visibility online, uh, the international audience is, is uh, very much looking for, uh, for products that originate from all over the world. And so uh, looking at ways to expand your business international markets is becoming more and more important. Um, the next trend that, that uh, we're going to really focus on uh, in, in our presentation today, the, the next three in fact, are specifically around multi-channel and omni-channel. And just to be clear, and I know this, this terminology sort of gets thrown around all the time, but to really speak to what is multi-channel, multi-channel is about selling uh, on different channels. And uh, whether it be selling on your own, shore, uh, on your own store uh, through a, uh, uh, an online uh, uh, shopping cart platform, or whether it be on a marketplace like an Etsy or an Amazon or eBay. Uh, and the word omnichannel, um, you know, I, I heard this uh, sort of uh, coined phrase about two or three years ago, um, and it originated uh, for me and one of the talks I heard from, from the then founder of eBay. Um, and he was talking about how businesses are evolving to cover uh, their sales not only through your traditional brick and mortar store, but also through your online presence and also sort of bleeding the experience that customers have across those channels. That's the word sort of omni-channel. You're, you're shopping through different devices, different interfaces, um, and it's becoming more and more important that, that a more cohesive sort of uh, uh, visibility be provided to the end, end buyer. Yep. Um, the next topic, uh, which I see is a really important trend and one that you know really is true to sort of my heart, is the technology and the operational side of the e-commerce business. Because uh, you know, there's one thing to be said about you know the, all the heart uh, and, and and sort of blood, sweat, and tears, if you will, that needs to be put into building a business uh, by spending time on, on on your marketing and sales, uh, only to see it sort of struggle. Uh, once it comes to the actual sort of operations of the business. And this has certainly been our focus as a company as Webgility for the last, you know, nine years or so. Uh, and uh, the technology and operations side of the business is, is one that we'll talk a lot more about in the coming slides and, and throughout our, our discussion today. And last but not least, uh, you know, uh, I, I sort of take pride in being called a data nerd. Um, so I'm really excited to talk about a lot of the the data and and you know the business intelligence and and hopefully also just sort of break those things down and, and talk about what does it really mean when we talk about data and, and what exactly is BI. Absolutely, great points. So just a quick summary: we think that there are a lot of trends that are going to be prevalent in 2016, uh, but specifically we're going to focus on discussing the multi-channel, omni-channel, technological and operational aspects as well as the BI. Uh, and data sides to help you free up time to go play in the marketing space. So let's get started with a quick poll. Uh, we're going to try and understand what information all of you look at first thing each day. And when we say that, we ask, you know, are you looking at financial information, maybe your accounting system, maybe some sort of financial dashboard, or even just your bank account? Are you looking at a sales report, something like a Salesforce? or even just individually at each of your carts to identify what sales have come in over the last 24 hours. Do you look at social media and news to identify if you're trending, if there's a big event that's happened over the last couple days, uh, or if there's anything notable that you could maybe take advantage of? Do you look at website traffic to make sure that either you're uh, keeping consistent or if something positive has happened that might be something you can capitalize on? And lastly, 
do you come in and look at communication? Just your email, your Slack, your T-chat, whatever communication tool you and your team uses, does that end up being the first thing you look at each day? So far in progress, uh, we're trending towards almost half of you are saying that you look at communication tool first thing, and then sales comes in number two, I see the point there, uh, followed by website traffic, which I think everyone can agree is sort of a, a basic understanding of the business and how it's running. So we'll see if those change later on, but that's just a quick start. Yeah, it's really interesting to see the feedback. Of course, we've still got the votes coming in, but uh, but it's fantastic. I mean, it, it really points to the need for, uh, you know, the tools necessary to communicate, uh, something that we'll, we'll cover uh, in a couple of the slides uh, going forward, I hope. Uh, and you can see how uh, the second most important looks to be the sales side, which is for an SMB, it's it's really where your business begins. Um, what are the sales and the transactions you had? Yeah. And and surprisingly, uh, social media news uh, seem to be at the end. Uh, tells me that there's a lot of a lot of effort, obviously, being put into kind of running the business at this stage and. The marketing avenues are, are almost sort of secondary as you get started in the day. Yep. And I could even bet that some of the people who are choosing communication are actually getting reports that indicate other parts of their business, but they just arrive in email or some other communication tool to give them sort of a whole picture. Long story short, it's getting harder to compete. There's numerous issues that SMBs and e-commerce businesses face, including increased profitability and growth. How do you achieve that? Uh, how do you reduce the operational costs? How do you keep and attract new customers? And how do you deal with government policies, regulations, improving the quality of products and processes? I mean, we can go on and on, and I'm sure people on the phone have a lot that they could add here as well. And we'll go into more details in a bit when we discuss about how to how do these play into game-changing trends. But Prague, could you walk us through each of these and why you think they're important? Sure. Sure. So, you know, just tying back to kind of what the big e-commerce trends are, uh, if you look at all the different categories, uh, what's interesting to me is that while there are things happening broadly in the, in the market, when it really comes down to it for a, a business owner and someone that's really kind of day-to-day -day running the operations, uh, they're finding it really, really hard to compete. And when you are uh, kind of you know, caught on a on a daily basis in the just the grind of these various challenges, uh, it's hard to really even think about how to get outside of that and and find ways to grow your business. Uh, and you know, I, I sort of tie this back to the to sort of slogan for for our company, right? Is like you know, how do you actually get ahead? Uh, because you're spending so much of your time in just competing and and running the business. So if you think about uh, you know the operational task, whether it be you know packaging a box, printing a label, putting it uh, you know sending it out as a shipment, uh, whether it be figuring out how much inventory you have in stock, what did you sell for that day, how do you get your vendors to send you you know um, to replenish those items? Uh, when you think about the different stages of an order and how are you going to communicate with your different staff whether uh, an order has been sent out or it's still sitting on the dock and uh, you know just looking at all of those different elements and then last but not least you look at the operational tasks like accounting which you know you know I love accounting said no one right mm -hmm. uh, maybe maybe other than your accountant uh, but uh, you know accounting is another sort of key area where uh, is just you have to do it. You can't get away from it. And 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 the idea that you have to spend your business, you know, all of your time sort of in these operational tasks as a business, uh, to me is 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 a big challenge. And it's making it really really hard for the small to medium sized business to really compete, especially when you have the likes of you know the really really large uh, uh, you know Goliaths of the industry that are that are just. Um, you know, eating everyone's lunch. They're just able to run so many of these app, uh, areas in an automated fashion. Um, and it's interesting, too, because I bet, you know, it's January. I don't think anybody has really said that their 2016 resolution was to be more involved in the day-to-day -day operations. Yeah. Most people start yeah. the year and say, I need to get away from the day-to-day minutiae and plan big, important things like new marketing campaigns, new industry.
industries and channels. Right. Uh, and you're right. I think people get bogged down with the day-to-day -day operations because so many of their tasks are manual. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that you know your New Year's resolutions should always be around how do I grow, right? Um, it's it's always been for me and certainly for our business, and and it's not about thinking about those operational tasks. And and quite frankly, uh, you know, if you look at the market and and you look at these various operational tasks, there's so many different apps out there that can help you tackle uh, a number of these different manual areas, right? right? So whether it be the shipping or the inventory or, or accounting and so forth, you've got a number of different applications uh, that can solve these niche problems, but that sort of blends into the next big issue, which is, you know, you get an app and it's able to solve some smart, small piece of your sort of puzzle, if you will, and, and then you have the other problem of, okay, well, how do these apps talk to each other Right. Uh, integration becomes painful, and 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 not to mention all of this is very expensive. I mean, who thought when you started your e-commerce company that you'd be thinking about integration? <laughs> right? No, I thought about my business. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're thinking about how am I going to grow, and and really, uh, this is to me the, the the key, you know, sort of grind that businesses are going through on a daily basis, which is which is to me why, as a business and, and as an industry, we need to find ways to sort of change the game because they're so heavily in favor of companies that have figured out ways to automate their business, figured out ways to really uh, get their apps to talk and, together. Um, and, and next, you know, going into kind of the data side of things, mm -hmm. uh, it's really difficult to, to analyze what's happening because information's everywhere. You've got apps for everything. And because of that, it's now really difficult to stay compliant to figure out, well, how much revenue did I actually totally collect from all of my channels? Right. And, and what were my expenses? Right. right. So uh, data is inaccurate. Uh, so many apps. And, and you know, I don't want to, I, I certainly don't want it to, you know, sound like, you know, we've got this dark cloud of problems and no real way to compete. But it, it does come down to making smarter decisions and finding ways to change the game, right? Absolutely. And so as we start off 2016, uh, I'm really hoping that uh, you know everyone sort of comes together to think about their operationals, uh, you know, the operational side of their business and the different apps they're using. How do they analyze the data? And last but not least, really get everyone aligned. Right? Yep. Um, Collaboration is really important. Absolutely. And I mean, people already said that they start out their day talking, they're looking into a communication tool. I think that clearly indicates that getting everyone aligned is a big important part of the process. It might be the first thing we look at. And looking at the analysis, I mean, we do think that we have a good insight across all of our customers, but thinking about other uh, thought leaders in the e-commerce industry, if they're not talking about uh, email marketing or internet marketing, they're talking about analysis, <coughs> identifying top products, how to you know, measure margins appropriately when you consider all these additional fees that are coming in. So it's definitely something that we're not the only ones seeing this as a right. big important. I mean, big data and business intelligence, you know, is not a fad. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 reality, right? You've got this much of information, you have to capitalize on it. I mean, just to use a simple example, right? Um, I installed a thermostat in my house, and I didn't know amount of hours we were actually running our thermostat at the house and the fact that now I get a monthly report of what's <laughs> happening with energy consumption has I think made me smarter about you know when you kind of heat the, heat the house like again leveraging every sort of aspect of data uh, even if you're not a data nerd but just sort of absorbing some parts of it and and using it to not only educate yourself but also the rest of your team and bringing them all together uh, it can really in my mind could help you really change the game definitely and that's just one example from a single app which leads into the next poll question pretty clearly uh, which is you know how many business applications do you as a business owner run day to day do you just use one through five maybe an email tool uh, a cart and accounting system, or are you in the six to ten where you're talking about specialized uh, sales tax or uh, some order management tools, maybe even some unique e-commerce 
marketing tools, advertising, and obviously it goes up. We're seeing a lot of people who are doing the 11 to 20 range, but realistically it could be anywhere from one to an impossible number to count. Well, it's funny because if you think about apps, I mean, it's, you know, do you can consider email an app, you know? Uh, you know, a lot of the tools that have become just a, a part of our daily kind of, uh, you know, communication uh, and usage, uh, we don't count as apps, but really it's task switching, right? You're having to switch from your email app to your order management system, to your chat application, to your, uh, you know, your Excel sheet, to your, uh, you know, uh, all of the different tools that you're using on a daily basis. Uh, and, and yeah, I mean, I'm not surprised just looking at some of the responses we're getting that, you know, that number is really high. It's, it's definitely multiple apps and, uh, you know, 10% are saying there's too many to count, right. which, which is probably true for me, certainly. Oh, same here, same here. <laughs> uh, I just also want to remind everyone while we're uh, waiting for some of these poll results as well as later on, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in uh, and we'll cover them later on. So we'll get back to it. Uh, we want to talk about the game changers one at a time. And remember, we're going to focus on the multi-channel, omni-channel, and technological side of the business, as well as some of the data and BI. Uh, but we'll start walking through with growing uh, the multi-channel expansion. Yeah, again, you know, I think that um, there's a lot of talk in the industry about uh, you know, the marketing side of things and just incredible amount of tools for marketing automation, email marketing, but I think it's really important to, to, to step back and just look at just something that's really as simple as listing your products in multiple locations, mm -hmm. right? Um, it is not enough to just have a single store and, and sell your products there. And why is that? Um, I mean, just the the validation in the market of, you know, if you're starting off with a, say, a new product that you want to test in the market, uh, you're going to spend so much of time and money in getting visibility right. uh, for your individual store. Why not experiment with a marketplace, right? Right, sort of like tapping into a flow that's already there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's you know, you, you get, and, and it's becoming easier to list on marketplaces. And if you can get your products out there, get an audience and test, right? Fine tune, again, data, right? Use the, the, the tools that you have available to understand uh, how your, your products are performing. Uh, experiment with prices, mm -hmm. right? Um, and uh, experiment with different catalogs, experiment with different messaging. I mean, just, just the sheer sort of flexibility you have uh, of being able to try uh, a number of different things when you have several channels that you can test your products on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it comes, you know, the, the flexibility around experimentation I think is important. Um, and if we tie this also back to sort of things like international markets, uh, the growth of mobile, um, you're able to again get access to a variety of different audiences mm -hmm. when you can list your products in different channels and be able to sort of see how they perform, and and sure, you know, granted, you're going to be uh, spending uh, a lot of money on the sales and marketing side for your own store, but at the same time, you're also going to be giving up a lot in terms of, of fees and, and, and listing fees and so forth for the different marketplaces, but there's the balance, right? right. Uh, you've got to really be able to analyze how your business is performing on these different channels, yep. and, and, and then you can take you know, the right steps to figure out, well, what channel's working, what's not working. And on top of that, you can even think about a small business who wants to maybe consider multiple brands, experiment with that, or run through a, a retail location pop-up shop, right? There's a lot of new channels that we're just sort of getting to realize nowadays. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, and, and especially for, you know, all those that, that might be uh, on a webinar uh, and listening uh, that are running brick and mortar stores, you know, obviously it should come as no surprise that you should be selling online. Uh, but uh, but certainly, I mean, just think about just a single stat, right? Like Cyber Monday, over three billion in sales, right? One day, three billion, uh, and all online. And if you weren't selling online, you certainly missed out, right? Um, and if you think about the traffic that came on Cyber Monday through the different types of devices. 
uh, you know, you had a, a bunch of, you know, over 30% of traffic was coming from, uh, from smartphones and mobile devices. Um, now, granted, sales are occurring uh, still predominantly, you know, offline, right? Online is still a very small percentage of overall sales, but uh, you've got to be present everywhere. And, and given all the tools and flexibility that you have now, uh, one should be uh, experimenting and, and, and seeing really what, what works. Yeah, we actually just had a really interesting question come in. Uh, the question is, who's winning in online commerce besides Amazon and why? Sure, sure. Uh, you know, uh, certainly, uh, you know, you can pull up sort of the Internet Retailer 500 list um, and, and you'll see a list of all the sort of top, you know, uh, e-commerce performers there. Uh, but if I were to just sort of take a step back and 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 even ignore the the sort of the, you know the top 500 and the big guys, if it comes down to really SMBs, the small businesses that we see that are that are growing are the ones that have taken the challenge. They've they've uh, you know adapted to the change, right? So uh, speaking of you know just one of our customers who's been with us now over five years. Um, she was running a, a small brick and mortar wedding collectible store uh, about five years ago, and realizing that um, you know the brick and mortar business and just the growth was 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 stalling. So she decided to launch an online store. She then just launched you know niche uh, stores within Amazon and the marketplaces, uh, and now she's experimenting with different catalogs, looking at different suppliers. Um, so again, those are the those are the folks that are winning, right? They're the ones that are competing. They're looking at new channels. They're looking at uh, uh, tools, obviously, uh, and, and you know, shameless plug, but you know, applications like our Unified product to really be able to streamline their operations and help them grow. Um, and you know, they're also listing on social, right? They're they're getting visibility on these social media uh, networks uh, to get the audience, especially when you've got in a niche sort of uh, an audience uh, uh, and, 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 a, and a market that, that is looking at those channels. Yeah, and I think that points out the two big categories that I've been seeing, which is you either have a branded product, something that's unique to you and you know going to be competing with your price because it's your brand, it's your product. Uh, that's obviously a higher risk where you're going through the development cycle and trying to uh, you know, get that manufactured especially for you. But then the other side of that is if you go with something that's not totally your design, getting to as many channels as possible and being that low price leader with the efficiency to still make profit on a low price point can also give you success. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you think about uh, you know branded versus unbranded, that's certainly a good way to look at it. I, I look at it as a sort of uniqueness, right? When you've got something really unique, it uh, gives you a little bit of an upper hand in terms of uh, you know positioning, but it's 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 about distribution, and if you're not on multiple channels and getting that that exposure, it's going to be hard to compete. Right now, even if you are, it's probably difficult to deal with the actual workflow for being multi-channel. So let's talk through how to leverage technology and automate some of these operational workflows. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you know, so the moment you say multi-channel, right? Uh, by definition, it's it's hard for e-commerce even when it's a single channel. But the moment you say you've got to grow in multiple channels, now you've got this increasing complexity of how do I list my products on these different channels? Mm -hmm. What is my strategy for keeping my inventory in sync uh, so that I don't oversell and now I have customer complaints? I mean, you think about channels like uh, eBay and Amazon, right, which, which have the lion's share of the traffic online, uh, they have very strict rules around, around fulfillment. They have mm -hmm. strict rules around customer reviews. And, you know, you're going to get bumped down the ratings. You're going to get bumped down on, on visibility if you're not fulfilling on time and have negative reviews. So I think it's important that you leverage all the technology uh, to, to automate your operations. And, and you know, it's sort of fascinating that it's 2016, we're still talking about automation. Uh, you know, software's everywhere. And, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's like a no-brainer, right? You, you should be leveraging technology, especially for the cost. I mean, uh, you know, uh, the amount of, rev, you know, amount of expense that goes into, uh, you know, operations employees who are spending time either, you know, keying in data 
or or having to you know shuffle between applications or uh, you know manage the information that's flowing across these different systems you know struggling with Excel um, it's just sort of a no-brainer to me to, to sort of look at technology and, and software that can really help you up you know automate things I mean listen we're we're in the age of, of, of robots and drones right I mean uh, if you think about again the the Goliath of the industry you know you've got Amazon experimenting with drones to deliver products to your doorstep right uh, if, if we're if, if we're that technologically advanced and 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 to me SMBs need to catch up quickly right, right. and adapt to those technologies and 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 you know obviously uh, from from a, a stat I read just just a couple of weeks ago you know about by 2020 about 80 percent of SMBs will have moved to the cloud right, right. Um, and in my mind that's already like too late <laughs> right I right. mean you, you should already be adapting right, right. Um, and and, uh, and and figuring out ways to, to influence not just um, your your sales and marketing teams but but all of your operations I mean there is better ways to run it guys I mean uh, you know there's software to, to automate printing of a shipping label right there's there's software to automate Syncing your inventory. There is software to, uh, you know, that tells you how your sales channels performed um, and who's on your website. Right? There's chat applications where you can proactively initiate a conversation on your website. I mean, these are these are now, and this is available. It's, it's just a matter of getting everyone to understand and adopt. But it seems almost like each of these is designed to not necessarily work with everyone else in the ecosystem. So in that sense. There's so many tools out there. There's so many applications to help you run your business. How do you choose one, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, listen. Uh, if if there were, uh, you know, uh, a single place that everyone could go to and pick, you know, the tool to run their entire business, like, it, well, to some some ways, it make the decision process faster. But I think it would also kill innovation, right? Um, there are a number of great tools out there, mm -hmm. uh, some which obviously we as a company provide and some that some of our competitors and other folks in the industry provide. And to me it comes down to understanding what parts of your business uh, uh, can really benefit from these tools mm -hmm. and, and really getting a first hand look at things, right? Uh, do, use, go through a trial, demo the product, uh, see how it works with not just your individual, for you as an individual, but other parts of your business. Um, and, and really come back to sort of the basics, right? Uh, when you've looked at an app, what sort of ratings does it have, right? What sort of credibility does the company have? Mm -hmm. um, what are the other sort of customers saying about that product? Um, certainly there's app stores now where there's a lot of visibility and, and, and rankings and ratings that, that are very helpful. Uh, but also look at, uh, you know, Get, get a live demo, right? And, and make sure they've got a money back guarantee. So when you try stuff and if it doesn't really work out, that, that you can change courses. Definitely. And, and uh, I would say, you know, one thing that, that I feel it's been very important for us as a business is, is support, right? So when you're looking at leveraging technology to, to, to run different parts of your business, make sure you're not working with a company that's going to leave you hanging. Right. right, it might be the latest, greatest, best thing today, but are they even going to be around? Right, right, and have they been in business long enough? Do they have a support team? Do they have, you know, strong customer satisfaction ratings? It's it's really important when you're making this such an important decision. Definitely, and you touched on a couple important points, but I think we're going to move on and, and cover one aspect of that, which is integrating and processing and centralizing data, because as you pointed out, there are a ton of really great applications, but they're not really working together. Uh, to help you run a whole business, right? They're helping you run a particular aspect of that business. Yeah, it, it's fascinating that this, to me, you know, still is a game changer, right? Uh, you know, I started WebGility in, in early 2007 and saw this big gap in the market where small businesses were using QuickBooks uh, at the time for their accounting and they were using, you know, a couple of different sales channels. Uh, it's amazing how things have evolved because Shopify wasn't even sort of known back then. I mean, it's now the, the, the biggest sort of provider in the market. But, you know, at the time, the big problem I saw uh, was integration, right? Uh, you had sales data in your online store 
and then you had to find a way to get it into your accounting system so you could pay the right taxes. Right, and make sure your inventory is up to date and, you know, file your taxes with the right cost to get sold. Exactly, exactly. And, you know, so what started off, it, it, to me, it just sort of the, 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 the thesis behind which the business was built was integration, and it still remains a big problem. In fact, the faster we are solving this problem, the bigger the problem's becoming because so many new sources of data, uh, right? You've got uh, so many different APIs that have sprung up, and more and more data is being collected, and each one of the applications is sort of vying to to get some part of your small business back office, mm -hmm. and what that means is that you're left with this, you know, this, this just convoluted mess of data everywhere, and it's really, really hard to, to unify, to bring together all of the different data that you have, and be able to centralize and connect it so that you know what's happening in your business. It's got to make life as a data nerd pretty hard. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yes, I mean, you know, uh, uh, it's, uh, it, 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 it's, it's certainly, I think, one of the biggest things that a small business can do uh, to really change the game in their favor this year, uh, and, and perhaps every year going forward, is make sure that their business remains integrated. They're not getting lost in the various applications that they have. Um, Which, going back to our results, are somewhere between uh, 6 and 11, all the way up to I can't even count pretty easy to get lost if you can't even count the number of applications. Yes, yes. And, and you know, again, I don't think uh, it is it is some sort of really big, like, vague thing of just, I need to integrate, right? Let's, let's put it down to real nuts and bolts, right? If you don't know your business cash flow on a day-to-day -day basis... You suddenly bounce checks. <laughs> I, exactly. I mean... If you, if you don't know your cash flow, if you don't know how much inventory you have in stock, if you don't know which orders you fulfilled and which ones are still left unfulfilled, if you don't know whether the traffic on your website grew or not, if you don't know whether you, know, you had 10 customers complaining on your social media feed, like if you don't know these sort of basic data points and all of this isn't sort of centralized in some place for you to make sense of it, how do you run your day-to-day -day operations, right? How do you grow? Right. And it's a good point. It's a good transition into day-to-day -day operations are key when you're, you're sorry, collaboration is key for your day-to-day -day operations, uh, but we know that that's difficult. So what are your thoughts on finding ways to communicate across channels throughout the organization and deal with some of this mess? Because in some cases, a single employee or a single part of your team may have access to that information. But let's say you haven't solved the integration problem perfectly, uh, it's still very hard to get that information for you as a business owner. Yeah, yeah, and and you know uh, when we talk about collaboration and communication, uh, that's becoming an even bigger problem, which is why I think in 2016 it's so relevant because uh, you know the number of remote workers is only increasing, right? Uh, Telecommunities is is a reality, mm -hmm. and the number of part-time workers is increasing, uh, especially as you go into the holiday cycle. Uh, and, and you're sort of ramping up your staff for fulfillment. Um, a lot of the different business functionality is also getting kind of outsourced, and there are a lot of consultants involved. So not only is it a challenge when you've got people within an office separated by cubicles to have a conversation, now, you know, expand that out to people distributed across the world mm -hmm. and, and trying to communicate about a simple thing as, you know, did an order get fulfilled? Right. right? Third party fulfillment systems, multiple warehouses, there's Absolutely. a lot of complexity here. Yes, I mean, just the pace at which, which uh, you need to run your business, um, it's really, really critical that you bring all of your uh, employees and your, and your you know, different staff members, whether they be full time or other, otherwise, all into the same fold. It's important that you communicate crisply um, and, you know, Time is money, right? It's an old saying, I guess, but it's still very, very applicable. If you're spending all your time in jumping between applications uh, and you don't have a centralized place from where you can collaborate, I wasn't surprised. In fact, when you look at the poll, of like the first, the, the first thing most people start off is with communication because you want to know what, what's going on, yeah. <laughs> right? And 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 so, uh, but what ends up happening when you start with email, for example, is you're having just just take a simple example. You're having a conversation about an order. Right, um, 
that conversation is happening over email uh, when your order fulfillment staff might have shipped it out already mm -hmm. and when your inventory guy is already you know calling the vendor to get uh, another shipment of that product and you probably might you might have your salesperson you know trying to you know update the copy for that uh, product online right so all the different folks that are involved in just that journey of the product and just the fulfillment of the operation side everything everyone absolutely needs to come together and and you know with shipping deadlines and and, and, you know, I, I'm sorry, but, you know, the, the reality is you've got Amazon delivering product faster than a lot of small businesses even put it into a box, right? right? So you have to, you have to, you know, pull up your socks, automate your business, get communicating and, and fulfill faster, yep. right? This is just the reality of, of, of where we are. Definitely. And you touched on a good point earlier in, in that discussion that, you're starting with collaboration to figure out what happened, right? to figure out what's going on. And the risk of doing that through a communication tool is you end up getting pulled into a particular item instead of, again, as we resolved in 2016, to look at bigger pictures, look at broad growth metrics, and understand if our business is actually improving, which is exactly the transition into looking at understanding and acting on business intelligence, which is, by definition, that big picture without necessarily the distraction of individual conversations with team members. Yeah, yeah. I think, you know, if you, if you look at, again, it depends on the size of the organization, right? If you're a small business with, you know, say, you know, four or five employees, um, at that point, it, it sort of lands solely in your own kind of domain, right? You've got to be the one that's looking at the big picture, uh, understanding what's happening in your business and making the right decisions. Uh, but if you're a large organization, people now you're, you're getting to that scale where uh, your systems are expanding. You've got different staff. You've got different parts of the funnel from your, you know, marketing to and sales to your order management and fulfillment to your, you know, vendor side. You got to look at all the different parts of your business. And you really need to understand what's going on. And I think it's, you know, one of the things that, that uh, I, I want to really sort of get clear, and, and I hope for, for the sake of the audience, that really everyone sort of gets business intelligence, right? You know, metrics are not intelligence. Yeah. Right? They're but, metrics. Yeah. I mean, you know, so often everyone looks at like, you know, yes, yeah, so I logged into my store and it tells me I did 200 orders at this average order value. You know, those are metrics. Those are great. I mean, that's good sort of basic analytics to know kind of what happened. In one channel, in right. one store. Right. But, but to me, pure sort of business intelligence is really look at that transaction, look at that channel, be able to understand what is the profitability of right. that channel. The more complex discussions. Correct. And, and it's about do I understand which channel's really effective, right? Where am I getting my most customers? What are my margins? And and quite frankly, business intelligence is about looking at that information and to a certain extent not having to think a whole lot, right? The system should sort of tell you what to go do. Right. And and that's the evolution to me of sort of going from from just pure metrics to intelligence and it, it should be about actionable steps that you need to take to improve your business. Which leads into a question from the audience uh, that asks, what are some examples of BI metrics uh, that stores should be looking at, in your opinion? And we can start off with one there, which is just what's the real deep information that you can take an action on? You know, what is the most profitable item? What is the least profitable item? Are you, uh, are you improving your business by marketing to particular customers because they're high value in the long term or are you potentially spending your time talking to customers that come in and buy one small thing? Yeah, I mean, listen, business intelligence itself is a multi-multi-billion dollar industry, right? So uh, it would sort of be unfair to sort of distill that to five metrics. But certainly, if you could take a look at your e-commerce business and look at it and, and, you know, I, I like to think about it as a funnel, right? So, so you've got the top of the funnel where you're attracting your customers, right? There are a number of interesting marketing metrics and, and intelligence that you should be gathering there, right? What's your most effective marketing channel? 
Uh, what are the dollars you're spending to acquire a new account, right? We look at it kind of like as a cost per lead. Um, and then once that, you know, you get that lead in, then you've got the second step of the funnel is they become a lead, they're interested, they're a buyer. Uh, they then go on to buy a product, right? So what's the actual cost of acquiring that customer? Mm -hmm. But now that you've acquired the customer, you've actually sold them a product, you've got some revenue coming in, but truly, you've got to look at the next part of the funnel, which is, what did it take for you to fulfill that product? Right. right? Shipping costs, warehousing costs, fulfillment, third-party systems. Yes, your payment fees, right? I mean, you could have a 3-4% margin. I mean, if you look at Amazon's margin of a few percent, boy, that's how much small businesses spend on just credit card fees. Right. Right? So... Uh, so you've got to really look at all the different parts of your funnel, and I think you can find, um, again, I don't want it to be seen to be harder than it necessarily is, but if you look at your business and, and sort of sit down and look at the data from your sales performance, even just over the last, you know, say six months or so, you should be able to point to different parts of your business and say, did I invest a lot of dollars in my marketing? Was it effective, mm -hmm. right? And once I got the sales in, how much did I invest into the actual operational side of things? And that's where you go back to, well, you know, do I need to automate some parts of the business which I aren't yet automated? And then, you know, what are my costs, right? And, and hopefully you can experiment with interesting ways of either fulfillment or, or different sort of um, strategies around your shipping and promotions. Um, and then, you know, use the different sort of intelligence that you can gather from the, the data, data you have at various parts of the funnel uh, to go make impactful changes. Great. And, and some of it is, you know, measurement, right? Even after you're done, uh, you want to go back and see if it's working. Right. So it's a constant sort of evolving process. Absolutely. And that obviously underscores the value of uh, understanding and acting on your intelligence so that that process and that cycle is not super labor intensive. Uh, which brings us to the end of the discussion. These are the main game changers that we've discussed. Uh, how to grow through the multi-channel, um, how to leverage technology and automate the operations and workflow so you can get back to the interesting big game changers. Uh, how to integrate and process to connect and centralize your data, collaborating and communicating across all of these different channels and applications to make sure the organization is all on a single page. And then finally, how do you understand and, and act on your business intelligence? And I say that in that way, it's your business's intelligence. Yeah, yeah. And again, I want to emphasize that, you know, there's a lot of talk about all the sort of really broad things that, that businesses can do, but these game changers kind are sort of the nuts and bolts of what a business can go work on today. Right, right, and 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 change what's happening in their business this quarter, this year, uh, and not things that that's going to impact them, you know, years down the right road. Definitely. So we'll take a couple minutes for a Q and A. Uh, we can get started with uh, first question that we saw. What's the first tool uh, that you use every day, Prague? Yeah. So you know, for me, the the first tool that I use is uh, typically Salesforce. Um, it's the tool which brings together for us uh, a lot of the, um, you know, the sales part of the business. So uh, going back to the question around sort of financials and sales, it brings that together. Uh, we also track a lot of our marketing capabilities there, so it's able to tell me, um, uh, you know, what sort of lead volume we're getting and what's the feedback. It also has um, information about our support teams and, and how our business is performing there. So uh, that's typically, uh, you know, the first tool, but it'd be sort of unfair for me to say that there's only one tool uh, mm -hmm. because uh, as, as a business owner and having to look at, you know, again, wearing multiple hats, uh, I'm often sort of jumping to obviously email and, and our sort of communication tool to be collaborating with different folks on the staff, uh, sometimes digging into uh, also our support system and just look at sort of core feedback that we're getting about the product and also a lot of our sort of back-end tools to see how uh, you know, product development is shaping up. So, uh, yeah, it's, you know, it's Salesforce and, and sort of CRM is, is usually one good place to start mm -hmm. and certainly communication and our internal tools are, are, are you know, right there. Definitely. So we had an interesting question come in as well, uh, talking about the struggle between a manufacturer who has their own brand it also has channels, but wants to sell direct. Uh, so the actual question is, if we're an OEM with direct sales, 
but our competitors are also our distributors. So in that case, you're sort of selling direct to the customer as well as you have these channels that will do the selling for you. How do you strike a balance between winning new business directly, getting visibility, and still keeping your channel partners happy? Yeah, that's that's a really tough one. You know, um, uh, certainly, I, I you know your distributors are are really the biggest channel you have, mm -hmm. right? And first and foremost, I think it's important that you have really really clear sort of strategy established with those distributors on what areas of visibility they have, whether it be certain geographies they have visible. Mm -hmm. um, it could be also certainly the channels through which they're selling, right? Mm -hmm. So if the distributors are maybe uh, stocking stuff at a retail location, then you might have some uh, uh, flexibility around, you know, distributing your products online. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you know, your distributor is probably, you know, going to be uh, selling at a, a slightly dip higher price point than, than your cost, and therefore you will have the advantage of pricing over them. But I think what's most important is there's a number of different strategies here, whether it be picking a geography, picking a channel, uh, picking, uh, you know, different sort of sales methodologies, right, whether it be, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, free shipping or, or some sort of a promotional bundle sort of offering for your products that might be different from what your distributors are doing. Okay. Uh, it really comes down to kind of the relationship you have with distributors and and. and frankly, what percentage of your business is being driven by them? Because if you, at some point, feel like you can get ahead through your own marketing, mm -hmm. through your own pricing, and, and, and your own sort of sales strategy, uh, then, then you might actually look at, you know, going independent, right? Uh, you might not need uh, that many distributors. But I'd be very sort of uh, conscious about understanding what that relationship is like, what the contractual limitations might be, and, and frankly, having an open dialogue because uh, it's their goal to sell your product, right. right? And it's your goal to kind of keep growing. So I, I think it's more of a partnership and finding the best way to work together. Great, great. Uh, now we only have five minutes left, so if you have additional questions, feel free to submit them quickly and we'll get to them as fast as we can. Uh, here's the next one that came in. How can these be data driven? And by that, the question really is, small businesses are generally not data driven. They don't have access to the right data. They don't have necessarily the insights or the time to analyze it. What are some ways that an SMB can manage all of these busy operations, but still be data driven? Well, uh, I think it's data and culture are probably not two words you'd want to use together, but I think it comes down to that, right? I think data comes down to culture. If you build a culture in your team and, and, and for yourself that you are going to make decisions based on data, right? You're going to understand your business metrics. Um, that's, that's where it all starts. And once you build that culture of data, it, it doesn't have to be some painful complex exercise. I think it comes down to really simple things. Can you distill your business and, and sort of the actions you take on a daily basis or a weekly basis uh, or sometimes a monthly basis uh, on, you know, five to ten key metrics mm -hmm. that really inform you about the health of your company? Okay. Right? And it used to be that it was you know, something you just looked at a PL statement, right? Like, what's my profit for that month? BI <laughs> for the dark ages. Yeah, right. <laughs> uh, you know, it used to be that simple. Uh, but now with e commerce, uh, no, it, you know, pick, pick your top five, right? Pick your top 10. You know, you experimented on a new sales channel. Um, what percentage of new business was driven by that sales channel? Right. right? Um, what's your month over month revenue growth? Right. Um, what is your average order volume, right, and a value, and also is it different across channels, and, you know, what is your cost of customer acquisition, Okay. right? What percentage of your customers are repeat customers? You know whether you're building a brand loyalty or not, mm -hmm. right? So uh, it depends on really the stage at which you are as a business, but it can be as simple as sort of identifying five or ten things that are important 
uh, and then kind of diving in to, to take some actions to really solve them. Great point. Even though it's a complex topic, uh, simplifying it and getting it down to a, a manageable point means that an SMB can actually be data driven. Exactly. Exactly. It, it it just it comes down to culture, and and, and I, in some ways, you know, it has to start from the top, right? As a business owner, uh, you want to be the one that influences that for the team, and and hopefully everyone else will follow suit and, and carries through your vision. Great. So we've got time for one more question before the survey at the end, which we really hope that you could uh, give us some feedback on. Uh, that final question is a pretty broad one. Should businesses be selling on marketplaces? I think that's a, a, a loaded question that asks about, you know, are you diluting your brand? Are you potentially losing margin? Are you opening yourself up to copycats? Uh, but, you know, what are your thoughts? Uh, yeah, boy, that's, that is a very tough question. Um, you know, I, I don't want to cop out and say it depends. I think that everyone should experiment with it, right? Uh, so I think the answer is yes, everyone should be selling on marketplaces, uh, but you should learn from it, right? It shouldn't be your only strategy because, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess the simple analogy I'd say is, you know, you don't want to build a house on, you know, land that someone else owns, right? right? So, so if you're going to uh, build an e-commerce business, and all of it is driven by a single marketplace, uh, don't be surprised you know, if in a few years the rules of the game are changed right. and, and you no longer can sell on that channel or the rules have changed or the fees have gone up, right? Mm -hmm. um, or you know, you're now not able to get to be the buy box winner. So uh, be smart, right? Absolutely sell on marketplaces, but learn from it. And, uh, and 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 take the necessary steps so that uh, so that you can continue to grow your business and 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 grab your own piece of land and not rely on others. Great. So with that, uh, well, thank everyone for joining us. Thank you for Prague for your time and expertise here. Thank you. It's been a it's been a really good discussion, and I really enjoyed all the questions, and I hope it was beneficial for the audience. Great. Uh, and just to check to see if it was beneficial, uh, if everyone could stay on for a moment and take the survey that's going to follow up, we'd really love to hear your feedback. Yeah, that'd be great. Thank you all for attending and uh, look forward to your feedback. Hopefully we can do more of these. Great. Thanks. Thank you.